Welcome to another Brave Conversation. Just real girls talking real life. I hope you're encouraged as you listen in and join the conversation. Well, welcome to our third Brave Conversation podcast. Today we have two guests with us. We have the lovely Sue Hartley and Pastor Claire from um, Highway Gilston joining us. And uh, we're going to just have a chat today about motherhood. Um, I have the great privilege of being able to run a connect group for mums and we have so many great discussions and questions to ask um, just in how to do this journey in this day and age and uh, it's something that we definitely can't do alone and I've just learned over the last years of raising my own children the importance of reaching out um, for help and getting wisdom from those around us. So these two ladies are definitely, um, they definitely qualify, they're the candidates of um, wisdom and um, a wealth of knowledge. So it's great to have you here with us today. Welcome, Sue. Thank you, Kimberly. And welcome, Pastor Claire. Thank you. Uh, before we get started, we're going to start with our game of the Would You Rather or um, This or That. So you ladies have had a little um, pre-brief on how that works. I think we might start with you, Pastor Claire. Okay. And um, this will be the last time we do this game, and then we're going to mix it up with something different next time. But um, before we get started, I might need you, Sue, to just block your ears. Okay. Uh, we don't want you to hear the questions coming for us okay. and no lip reading either. You know, if you're competitive, I know you'll use all me. So. Okay. <laughs> I'm not that clever. No, no. Are you ready, Claire? Okay. Here we ready? go. Okay. Would you rather or Queensland or New South Wales? Queensland. Sweet or savoury? Sweet. Gold or silver? Gold. Run or swim? Run. Action or rom-com? Action. Three hands or wings? Wings. Summer or winter? Summer. Dolphin or horse? Horse. Two story or single house? Two story. M&Ms or Maltesers? Maltesers. Chips or popcorn? Popcorn. Maths or English? English. Lollies or chocolate? Chocolate. Scrambled or poached? Poached. Beach or rainforest? Rainforest. Fly or teleport? Fly. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Basketball or netball? Basketball. Massage or facial? Facial. Ice skate or roller skate? Ice skate. AFL or NRL? I have no idea. <laughs> Camping or hotel? Hotel. Tennis or hockey? Tennis. Guitar or piano? Piano. Purple or blue? Blue. Cadbury or lint? Cadbury. Adidas or Nike? Nike. Primary or high school? Primary. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Vegemite or Promite? Vegemite. McDonald's or KFC? KFC. Mullet or perm? Ooh. Oh, time up, <laughs> time up. There we go. All right. You made it to 32. What oh. would you have said? Oh, have you perm, had, I think. Have you had either? Perm. You, I've you, had a perm. Definitely had a perm. Oh. Now we're showing our age. I've had a perm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see photos of that. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting question. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now for you, Sue, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll set the timer and... Queensland or New South Wales? Queensland. Sweet or savoury? Sweet. Gold or silver? Gold. Run or swim? Swim. Action or rom-com? Action. Three hands or wings? Wings. Summer or winter? Summer. Dolphin or horse? Dolphin. Two-storey or single house? Single. M&Ms or Maltesers? Neither. Chips or popcorn? (laughs) Chips. Maths or English? English. Lollies or chocolate? Chocolate. Scrambled or poached? Scrambled. Beach or rainforest? Fly or teleport? Fly. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Basketball or netball? Basketball. Massage or facial? Massage. Ice skate or roller skate? Roller. AFL or NRL? Neither. Camping camping or hotel? Hotel. Tennis or hockey? Tennis. Guitar or piano? Guitar. Purple or blue? Blue. Cadbury or lint? Cadbury. Adidas or Nike? Adidas. Primary or high school? Primary. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Vegemite or Promite? Vegemite. McDonald's or KFC? KFC. Mullet or perm? (laughs) <laughs> oh, stop there. That's the time. Both of you made it to 32. <laughs> well oh my, oh my done. Gosh, okay. Now, I need to ask, yeah. firstly, uh, well done on both choosing perm instead of mullet. <laughs> I would be worried. <laughs> um, but I need to ask about the M&Ms or Maltesers. 
I don't, I'm not a sweet not a person, sweet person. Although I said sweet instead of savoury. I thought, what did you say? Don't yes. go back. Don't go okay. back. Okay. All right. Yeah. I thought there was a bit of an oxymoron there. No, I'm not a, I'm not a either. Yeah. No? Not a no. sweet. So what's your go-to if you want to have a, a snack at night or something? Um, like I, a I, treat. I have a little block, like a, a piece of dark chocolate, 70% chocolate, and I'll suck on it. And that gives, that's it. That's your sugar hit. That's my sugar oh, hit. there you go. Yeah. I'm not chocolate person or no. sweets or whatever. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. You learn a lot from playing these games, I yeah, think. You do. Even though you've known someone for so many years, but just these little questions. It's My only lot. irresistible is ice cream, but there is uh, keto ice cream which has no sugar in it. Oh. So, yes, if, it, if ice cream is in the house, I can't leave that alone. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's not in the house. Keto ice cream. Yeah. We'll have to check that one out. Yeah. So, yes. Well, thank you, ladies. Good. good job. A tie, both tied. So there you go, no winners. Good. <laughs> you, you said you're not competitive either, Sue. Is that right? I can be. Okay. It depends. Yes. It depends. All right. Yeah, I may be a little bit too. I think so too. <laughs> Come on, Claire. As you know me. <laughs> At the start, I get think before we started <laughs> before we started recording, Claire said she wasn't competitive, yeah, but no. now <laughs> Uh, the truth comes out. It no. does a little bit. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm in the same boat. I can't. <laughs> like, I love playing board games or card games, yes. but if you ask someone like KA, she'd be like, whoa. <laughs> 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 playing a card game with Kim, look out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, anyway, ba- getting back to our topic of conversation for this morning, um, parenting. So parenting in a godly way in this day and age um, – I think it ties in really well with our first podcast about linking the generations. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, um, you have gone before us and there are many women that have gone before us in this parenting journey. And um, there are so many of us that are still um, in this journey and there are so many questions. And we can't do it all on our own, in our own strength. And obviously that's why we have the Holy Spirit. But Holy Spirit has also placed mentors and um, wisdom around us. So, um, ladies, I'd love to probably start by asking you, um, what was your go-to scripture in your parenting journey and why? Um, Actually, before we get into that question, I should probably get a little bit of a background about your parenting um, and what home looked like for you and raising your children. So can we start with you, Sue? Um, I have three sons Mm -hmm. um, under five. So it was a very busy, noisy, boisterous household. I came from a very um, quiet studio, studious household of mum and brother, and that was it. So it was a bit of a shock to the system. Um, And I was constantly asking, how do I raise these boys? Like, they bounce off walls. They can't walk past each other without thumping each other. And um, very protective with each other, but it was a whole different place for me to be in. Mm. So... mm. And you did that journey on your own? No, I didn't. When my boys were younger, um, their dad was there and and we very much communicated Mm -hmm. and talked through um, how we were going to raise our children and the boys. He comes from a family of five boys, so he had a lot more knowledge than I did. Mm -hmm. And his advice to me was to get a good first aid kit, um, go and do your first (laughs) aid certificate and let them be boys. Right. Yes, right. not an easy thing to do, but yes. Okay, mm. so you did the whole part of that journey together? Yes. Yes, mm. okay. And were you both Christian? Uh, yes, start? we were, very yes. young Christians. Um, our um, oldest son was about eight months old when we first came to the Church of Christ. Yeah. So not Pentecostal at all. That was another 10 years down the track. Yeah. Um, so we were very raw, very new. Neither of us came from Christian backgrounds at all. Yes, mm. okay, mm. yeah. So based on that, um, what was your go-to, I guess, anchoring or uh, the scripture that you just kept coming back to in raising those boys? As I said, I was a very new Christian at the time, so I I can't actually say that I used to come back to that, but I think the thought or what I picked up on most was it probably won't be a popular scripture today, but it's Proverbs 23.12 where it says, do not withhold discipline, and I know that it talks about r- the rod after that. And I'm not in favour of, um, you know, corporal discipline or, or anything mm-hmm. like that. But I think there is a place for discipline, um, and particularly with three young boys in the house, 
Um, discipline to me means teaching them accountability, giving them strong boundaries um, that this is appropriate behaviour, this is not, and there are consequences for inappropriate behaviour. Um, and it had to always match what the behaviour was. Mm. So you didn't do, you didn't take something off them that had nothing to do with what you were trying to teach them about. Yes. Mm. Okay. So I, I took comfort from that because I grew up in a totally different household. Um, and um, their father grew up in a totally different... He grew up in a quite a um, strong disciplined household, let's put it like that, He with five boys. So we kind of, um, between us, found a, um, um, a path in between. Um, and the other thing that, that we both agreed upon, we would never discipline our children in anger. Mm. They were always put to one side or mm. sent to go and think things through. And then when we had control and we were calm, then we would go and talk it through and, and um, you know, discipline in the way that was appropriate for what had happened. Yeah. Right. And what about you, Claire? Oh, well, mine was very different because um, as a teenager, because I have actually three boys and a, and a girl. Yeah. But as a teenager, I told everybody I was having no children and I wasn't getting married. <laughs> so to find myself at 19 married, and yes. I think I was 21 when I had my first son, yes. uh, I had no idea. No. I'd actually never even held a baby before wow. I had my first son. Really? So I remember being in hospital and they hand me my baby and it was in that moment I remember feeling like the whole axis of my world shift. Mm. And I was like, what is this? And the love that poured out of my heart for this little thing that they handed me mm. was ridiculous. And I never knew that I wanted to be a mother. Mm. So I had no preparation for my mm. parenting at all. No books. I Even my sister who'd had her children, she would like, do you want to hold the kids? I'd say, no, not interested. I was horse girl, I was out the paddock, I was outside and I had these dreams that I was just going to be um, a farmer's wife maybe one day. If not a wife, I'd live on a farm, I'd be riding horses and that's what I'd be doing. So to find myself at 21 with my first son and then get three, three sons and a daughter and have four in the end, uh, my parenting journey became very organic. Yes, It's probably how I do life even now. Ride or die. <laughs> it, it is kind of like what feels right. And I know that sounds a little bit new agey, but for me it was let it come naturally. Mm -hmm. And um, and out of this amazing feeling of love for my first son when he was born, it just grew. Mm -hmm. um, and again, having boys like mm -hmm. you, mother of men. And um, funny enough, even when I was younger, I used to say, I think I'll just have boys. Because I just like the simplicity of doing life and having fun and being outdoors. And I was never the girly girl who would be just on makeup and hair. Mm. That wasn't me. So mm. I couldn't see myself with a bunch of girls. But in saying that, when I got my daughter, mm. she was the icing on my cake. Yeah. <laughs> and I realized, oh, I was so thrilled to have a daughter. Yeah. Um, so my journey has been um, very organic. Mm. Um, and my go-to scripture was Isaiah 54:13 which is all my children shall be taught of the Lord, and that word means discipled, mm. and great shall be the peace of my children. Mm. And I still speak that out now because now I'm a grandmother of eight, mm -hmm. and I take all my children to be my eight grandchildren as well yes. and to be discipled. In other words, every place I wasn't able to help them, he would, mm. and that peace would be perfect shalom, which complete wholeness yeah. for my children throughout the seasons of their lives. So even now, when the children have problems or the grandchildren do, I just quote that scripture. Mm. And all my children shall be taught of the Lord. God, they're your problem. Mm. You help them. You be there. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't really have it all. To be honest, I parented by the grace of God. Mm. I, think I really all did. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all do. I think based on, on say, hearing that, um, even just conversations that I've had with my mother-in-law and my mum, um, both have raised... Well, speaking of myself, <laughs> both have raised children that, you know, love God, um, great children, um, great human beings today. Um, and they, you know, when they speak about their parenting journey as well, both had three children. They said, you know what, we did the best with what we had Absolutely. In, in that time or the, we did the best with what we knew in that time. And I think no one's an expert. No. You know, we're, 
we are all on a journey and each and every child is different, like you were saying earlier, Claire. Um, so, you know, I know that you're not here sharing you, you, you know it all or you've Absolutely got it all. Not. Definitely um, not. And none of us do, like I said, but I think it's just, it's so great to hear these stories. Yeah. Um, and I know that in our mother's, um, my mum's connect group, we've been going through a study at the moment called Mum Struggles. Mm-hmm. And some, each week there's a different topic. So it could be mum guilt, mm. comparison, yes. yeah, mum good. comparison. Yeah. Um, it can be, um, what were some of the other ones as well? Um, intentional parenting, okay. um, discontentment. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just some of the topics. Have you got anything to speak into does, when I mention those words? Is it, does anything come to mind? Okay. Well, I think that's just the reality of being a mum. Yes. Mm. We, yes. We go through emotional, I mean, we're women too, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, we are very emotional, but we don't get a little manual that comes no. with our kids. Mm. So you're very much flying blind and often you have external pressures as well. Absolutely. And these days women are expected to do Mm. everything Mm. as well as be the perfect parent. Mm. And um, I don't think if we've never had a good model of good parenting, I think that makes it really difficult. And Mm. I think the subjects that you've just spoken about are very real and very pertinent Mm. to our our parenting. Mm. That they're real, but I think you said at the beginning – Reaching out to, you know, the, Timothy talks about the, the older woman and the younger woman coming together and walking alongside mm-hmm. that genera- gener- generational um, help from each mm-hmm. other is vital. Yeah. Absolutely. And in all those seasons and all those things you just brought up, I would say ask another mum. Mm-hmm. Ask a grandmother, how did you do it in this mm-hmm. season? And that would be my go-to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think today it's it there is a greater challenge in raising children mm. to the extent that even um like going back before my children were little we had the extended family mm. so you would have mums and grandparents and aunts and uncles and it was a tribe and mm. and i do believe that it takes a tribe um to raise a child and uh, as a parent you're not always the one that um, your children will come to, mm-hmm. they'll go to somewhere else or they'll have a different question or to have another voice, in the, a safe voice, mm-hmm. a wise voice as well. Whereas today we've lost that extended family. Mm-hmm. If we've got one parent and children in a home, we're doing well. And so um, it's, it's even more important that the church family, the generations, gather around mm-hmm. and are there to support and encourage and help as well and to... Not, um, I think one of the greatest responsibilities we have, and, and Shane Willard spoke about this so brilliantly to do with the church, is to not sit in our older views and our older eyes and look with judgment mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or whatever, but to actually get in there and help. Yes. And to say, you know, I remember being a young mum and struggling and being so tired you, I've, you ever wondered if you were going to feel normal again. Mm-hmm. And um, and that wasn't until like 12, 14 years after you'd had the child. So mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of challenges and added challenges today. And as you said, Claire, trying to be super mum and the expectations that are on young mums today, mm-hmm. um, I think it's a responsibility for us older women to actually get around younger women and support mm-hmm. and for them to feel comfortable in being able to say you know what I'm not so doing so well can you take my baby today so I can actually listen to a message um I mean for the first four years I don't know about you Claire we had a mother's room out there and I don't think I even heard a message Mm. um you know you in between looking after and and we always taught our children they were on the floor they didn't have children's church and that but they were on the floor with us but you're constantly getting up walking out being aware of disturbing and things like that and and being conscious of other people around you and how your family is affecting that so you tend to um miss out a lot I guess and and yeah yeah I think it's very important what what you said about just gathering around each other um I was speaking to Judy who comes to Highway Ormo and she has taken has taken it upon herself to just spontaneously turn up to all of our young families in the yes. park picnics. And she has grandchildren of her own, um, but she just comes, her and her hubby, they come together and she said, you know, I know we're not a young family, but we see the value in young families, That's especially so the importance, you know, this day and age and, and what's coming against the family unit. 
And she said, you know, I hope you don't mind us coming, but we just come because we think it's so important that we can be here and encourage um, the young parents and all the young, you know, the single mum or whoever it is and so that they can build a relationship with us if ever they need. And I think that just being intentional in ways like that is important. Mm. Um, That's a good word, intentional. It's, mm. yes. Just coming into church um, and seeing young mums and, and just having a word of like, you look beautiful today when she knows that she's probably, you know, been the last person to get ready that morning and has thrown something on and if she's if she's thrown makeup on she's done well and brushed her hair and she kind of feels like a bit of a wreck with trying to deal with all of the um, emotions and things of children in a car and getting them to church and walking in like everything's okay and just to say you look lovely today or you did you know you're doing such a great job Mm -hmm. it's the small little things we don't have to do huge things but just be aware of each other Mm. and be intentional that's a really good word yeah Yeah. intentional yeah Yeah. Yeah. I think mothers are very hard on themselves very Mm. and we do carry a lot of guilt Mm. yes and we don't ever want to bruise our children Mm. but sometimes out of your own humanness Mm. we behave badly or we behave a way we wish we hadn't yeah and um, and I think it's just having voices around us that can actually cheerlead us yeah. mm. and encourage yeah. that. And when you're a bit older and you've been there, you learn not to sweat the small stuff. Yes. Mm. You learn that, you know, this, yes. this storm will pass and yes. you'll get through it and your kids are actually very forgiving. Yeah. You don't realise how yeah. forgiving, but we need to learn as mothers to be forgiving on ourselves, yes. to That's actually right. forgive ourselves for the things that we think mm. we're not doing so well in. Mm. And also remember that that's our filter. Yeah. Sometimes, like Pastor Byron says, that 20% blind spot, you need yeah. others to go, actually, from my perspective, you're doing a great yeah, job. Yeah. <laughs> and I think to clear on, on what you just said, um, it's important for us and our children to when we do make a mistake or we allow our emotions to get the better of us, to actually go to our children and say, Mummy's really sorry she got angry. I'm very mm. tired. Will you forgive me? Mm. I do love you. So you're affirming that, mm. but you're also allowing children to say, oh, Mummy makes mistakes too, yes. or she's not that. perfect. Mm-hmm. But it's that, again, it, it's that repentance and, mm. and forgiveness yes. and it, 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 it joins trust. It yes. builds trust. It, it builds um, security in both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's that exact topic came up at Mums Connect the other week and um, one of the mums said, my husband actually pointed out to me that I often say sorry to my boys, my young boys, I'm sorry I shouldn't have shouted but da 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 and he said you need to take the but out of it because it's almost justifying it and so she said I've actually been working on just saying I'm sorry I shouldn't have shouted or you know, and we discuss even even that language of I know I was angry, mm-hmm. or I know I was upset, yeah. but I shouldn't have shouted at you. You mm-hmm. know, and that whole if it, if in your home it's a rule that we don't shout at each other, yes. then mum shouldn't shout when she's upset, or or dad, you know, mm-hmm. vice versa. So um, did you have key family values or rules, or just some some you know fundamentals? Um, that sort of anchored you and and your family just knew that that was a no-go zone or this is how we do it or, yes, we're not like that family and that's okay. Mm. Um, We had – I remember when um, my children were small, there there was a particular TV show that was very popular at the time um, and that was a no-go in our house. And so we just sat down as a family and discussed it. And we used to have a lot of family discussions. So it was a um, a discussion when something was presented, if we had to make a decision, and everybody had a chance to say how they felt about it. Mm -hmm. And then as a family, we made a decision. Now, there are times when mum and dad have to make decisions that you can't include children in. Mm -hmm. But on those sorts of things, if children actually understand why Mm -hmm. behind it and not just the no, Mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier to get everybody on the page. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, we would have, we did a a little bit of a, um, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. So one of our fundamentals was you can do anything you see mum and dad do. Mm. You can say anything that mum and dad say. Mm. And the reason why we probably, brought that into our family was growing up um, my parents weren't Christians early days but then they became Christians and my dad had a radical 
radical saving. And he went from a worldly, worldly lifestyle to completely different, burning all his records, Simon and Garfunkel, <laughs> which I actually really like. <laughs> but he burned all his Simon and Garfunkel. And I remember watching this. And he threw out all his alcohol. He just went radical. Yes. Within a year of being saved, he was pining a church and pastoring a church. Yes. And and I saw this complete change. And I saw what we were allowed to do and then what we weren't allowed to do because of faith mm. as a child. Mm. And I loved that because yeah. I saw the change in my dad yes. and the change it brought in my family. They'd gone from arguing all the time to every Sunday being in church and loving each other and our home completely changed. Mm. And then I got into the church and I saw this hypocrisy. Mm. I saw people, and especially being a, a teenager in church, I saw parents of other teenagers who would get up on Sunday morning and preach. Then during the week, they lived a completely different mm. life and I hated it. Mm. And something inside of me said, I never mm. want to have that in my home. Yeah. And so we made this rule and so our kids would come home with things and they would tell you now, they would come home and say a word and we'd say, have you ever heard dad and I say that word? Mm-hmm. Nope. Well, are we allowed to say it? Yep. And they knew it was mm-hmm. no. Yes. So it was very much, yeah. um, you know, James talks about that, about it's not what you say, it's what you do. That Absolutely. Matters. So one yeah. of our, our key things and mine particularly was that if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to love God. Mm-hmm. Let that be homo- homogenous in every part of your life. Let it flow through. And I'm, I'm quite a fiery person because I've got a South African background. So I certainly do not have perfect emotional stability. <laughs> I'm very passionate. Passion is and good. Passion yeah, is so, good. <laughs> but I wanted to teach my kids that even though I sometimes behaved really badly because sometimes there was a no second between one and a hundred yeah. in emotion. Um, and so I would actually say to them, what I just did then – that's not okay. <laughs> Let's not do that. So I, I, I guess what we tried to teach them was um, a model of what life looks like, yeah. what reality is to be human, mm-hmm. but also what it means to love Jesus, yeah. that there's forgiveness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if we did it, loving Jesus, then they could do it. Yeah. Yes. And so yeah. I, I hope and pray that that was enough mm-hmm. to teach them not that you just can't because we, we're Christians, yes. mm-hmm. but because faith looks like something. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Being transparent or, mm. and authentic, I think mm. that's what I'm hearing there. Yeah. 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 And as far as conflict resolution, whether it be between a spouse or the children, how did you bring God into that? Um, what was the best way of instead of cut it out or sort it out amongst yourselves, did you have any any specific strategy that worked? Mm. Um, I, I was very big on communication. Mm. Um as in expressing your feelings and listening to the other person. Mm. So I, we worked a lot with I feel or um, and the other person listening and then they having an opportunity to and really listening. Yes. Um, not just listening until it's my turn mm-hmm. but really listening and hearing what they're saying and then seeing both sides, I guess. Didn't work all the time. Mm. Um, but if I, – again, Claire, you um, – if you give in the height of the moment is not the time to have a discussion, mm. to give people opportunity to settle down and calm down and then come back and and present the, the situation of what happened, this is how I viewed it, um, this, is, this is what I saw. Mm. You know, little Billy was really upset because of this mm. and you reacted because of that and... and it, it's again it's transparency in expressing that this was the situation this was the reality it's not necessarily wrong or bad but there is a better way of doing it where we care for each other's feelings a little bit more yeah. just making aware I guess yeah mm. well I had a family of boys who it wasn't so much conflict it was more separating the wrestling oh yes <laughs> you know boys they, they are not so much um, the emotional conflict. No. They are definitely more yes, um, the wrestling yes. um, or getting out of dishes and things like oh, that, yes. you know. So, so one, I had one son in particular that was very good at that. Um, he just strategically always needed to do a bathroom run when dishes were up. Yes. Um, but, I, you know, we often talk about um, how growing up our boys loved each other a lot. Mm. Yeah. And, and they still do now. So we didn't have a lot of conflict so much with them mm. or with Kez because she was the same. Mm. But, um, you know, when you, when you come into a family and you get married, 
I think sometimes marriage can be the conflict. Mm. And, you know, I was only 19 when I got married. So I so didn't realise <laughs> how broken I was. Yeah. Mm. And David, I came from a family that we were very external processes. Mm. You know, my father was French and my mother was Scottish, so you can oh, imagine okay. I was South African. <laughs> Poor David. Perfect mix. <laughs> Poor David. And David came from a very respectful English family oh. and his mother had three generations of Christians yes. and I, we were just, you know, now just, just second generation Christian. Yeah. <laughs> and he marries this girl which he thought was super quiet and, <laughs> and I was just the volcano <laughs> that, you know, triggered on so many levels and didn't understand that myself. Yes. So our conflict was not so much with the kids and we definitely were on the same page parenting-wise. It was probably more between each other mm. and him not understanding this young woman with so much emotion. Mm. And, and I'm so passionate about what I believe that I'm super easily triggered. <laughs> So, you know, I was so passionate about what was right for our kids and what was not right for our kids. Things at school, I stood up for things at school and teachers. And poor David is just having to calm the storm. Um, So we had to learn and I had to learn a lot on how to just keep my passion or my conflict with David, Mm -hmm. not affecting my kids. Mm -hmm. And um, and I didn't always do that well. Mm -hmm. So I learned the hard way, I think. Mm -hmm that I saw how much it affected children if parents argue. Mm. And that is really damaging and bruising. And so out of seeing their pain, I had to change some strategies. And to be really honest, I would say David was the saint. Mm. He was the one who would keep the peace and he used to hold my hand and say, let's pray. And so the kids did see (coughs) that. And they have watched a journey that has been very stormy We have been as a family through a lot of things Mm. and the conflict probably has never been towards each other, um, has now become just the seasons of life. Mm. You know, you have the grief seasons, you have the things that happen that are so big that they rock Mm. you. And so what we did, because family to me was everything. Mm. And Mm. even though I didn't want to have children, once I got children, I became passionate about my family. And so we developed this culture of sitting around the table every night for dinner. Mm. And to. that table, yes. and I loved what Shane Willard yes. said yes. about it being actually the symbol of the yeah. church. Yes. Everything leapt in me. So what we did, we went out and bought this old table with recon- um, just reconditioned wood that was just, it had all sorts of life already in it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I bought it because I love the the history that was there, that life happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes nails do get into wood. It does leave a dent and Mm -hmm. there are bruises and there are stains. Mm -hmm. And we've got this big table that we sat around that actually reflected us. And around that table, we talked about everything. Mm -hmm. We prayed about things. We cried. I cried probably more than anyone. (laughs) My boys giggled and laughed. Um, But that was the place that we actually brought the stuff Mm. together. Uh, Not the marriage stuff, but definitely our conflict or the issues around the world or Mm -hmm. our classrooms or school or friendships, life. When my dad died, we cried together, we Mm. prayed together around the table. Mm. Yes, we were the same. I I came from as I said, just my mum and my brother. Mm-hmm. So, um, and it was a very different um, life that I knew. But I was very strong about building a family. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd not experienced it. I've never met my grandparents, aunts, uncles, anybody. So my family was three people. Mm-hmm. And then my brother was um, killed just when we came to Australia. So we were down to mm-hmm. two. So for me, family was incredibly important. And when I first became a Christian, um, I've got a very dear friend of mine and she's fourth generation Christian and they they lived together, three generations together and I saw um, that example and it was very foreign and I said, you know, I don't feel jealous of it. I feel a sadness that I don't have that mm. and she said, Sue, God has chosen you to start a new righteous line Beautiful. Yeah. and I took hold of that and it was like, okay, so... I, that was not in my past experience. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to create family. Mm-hmm. Um, so, But I can start now. Yes. And so the table became a very important part. We always ate as a family yes. at the table yes. and we discussed things. And anything that the, that the boys wanted to talk about, whether it was sexual things, whether it was, mm-hmm. you know, about anything, religion or whatever, it was discussed and it was talked about, not talked about but talked 
through. Yeah. Um, and I, I was always have been extremely passionate about building family, a new generation, and then mm. going on to the next generation, which I've got grandchildren now. Mm. But um, when you don't have that as an example, mm. again, if you look, you can see other examples mm. and there you can follow that model and say, okay, mm. this is what it looks like. I can start to create it. Yes. And, yes, you make a lot yes. of mistakes along the way. Yes, um, so many. So many. But, you know, God is such a redemptive God Isn't and his he? grace Isn't covers he? us. Yeah. And I look back now, we were talking about this before we started taping, and I can see so many things. It's like, oh, I, I wish I could have done that better. I mm-hmm. wish I had made this a priority or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, But, you know, I've seen God's grace move through my family and mm-hmm. my boys in huge situations mm-hmm. um, and even in the small things and the challenges that do come as a family mm-hmm. and just thought, you know, Lord, I don't have to be so concerned about being right That's or right. perfect. perfect. Yes. I can just do the best that I can with what I have, mm-hmm. constantly looking for something else or listening mm. um, and learning from those around me mm. um, and say, okay, we can implement that mm-hmm. in our way. It doesn't have to look exactly the same way, mm. but implement that into hopefully making our family a little richer in, yeah. in what we're mm. doing. Mm. Yeah. I get I get so excited because I see um, one of my sons has um, twins and they're pastoring too and I just I watch how they do life in ministry um, and I, I just think the things that they've put into place, it's like, oh, I would choose that, I would choose that, I would mm. choose that. Um, and it may not have happened in my generation, mm. yes. but I'd, I'd like to think that somewhere along the line the seeds were sown 100%. and that 100%. it's come through with the next lot. Yes. And yes. Um, yes. I think you get very intentional about building yes. legacy. Yes, mm. And what kind of legacy do you want to build in your kids? Mm. And you know, coming around as a table, as a family, for me, I had this little vision of my kids inviting all their friends. Yes. And they'd sit around the table and the legacy was that even their friends would come and and be a part of a family mm-hmm. that was inclusive yeah. mm. and it was fun. Yes. And I think, you know, you sort of weave within that your beautiful faith of Christ being mm. central. Absolutely. And I think as a parent, I was so aware that I was so lacking mm. and I so needed God's help. Yes. And so everything it became for me as, as a parent about seeking him that I did this better. Yes. And 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 I actually learned to pray mm. being a mum. Mm. That's yes. how I learned to pray. Yes. I learned to become an intercessor yes. because I used the love for my kids yes. and my family to mm. drive me to that place of my knees and to say, God, hey, I need you. I can't be at school. I can't be in the playground. Yes. You know, some of my kids experienced bullying mm. and I did intervene once, but that may not be for a podcast. <laughs> But generally, I think there are times when you need to intervene. <laughs> uh, and I wouldn't recommend what I did. But <laughs> I, you know, save that for another day. Yeah, hey? <laughs> I, I just I found the place of teaching my children how to pray. Yes, and and yeah. also bringing them into the miracles and mm. the answered prayer. Mm which was so powerful of building a legacy. Mm. And like you, Sue, one of my sons is a pastor and I look at the way he does his family and Mm. I'm like, they do it so much better than I did it. And I love to tell them how great they're doing it and I just wish I could go back and do it as good as they're doing it. Um, But like you, I pray that there were some seeds Mm. and um, those seeds will bring a harvest. And the only thing we want and what I've ever wanted for my kids is that they would thrive. Yes, and they would absolutely. flourish, mm. and that they, you know, that whole thing about um, that great would be the peace of my children. Mm. Um, I, I pray that now. I pray that for their marriages. I pray that for their their children and my grandchildren. And I pray that because that that word peace is complete wholeness, mm. which is spirit, soul, and body. Mm. So that in every area of their life, they would just flourish. Mm. And there's just something about when you you take a promise and you attach it to generations. Yes, Yes, absolutely. It's really powerful. There becomes a legacy that continues. And they probably don't even know that I had this promise going since they were young. 
Yes. They don't know that it's still, and even now, yeah. I still prayed over them. Yes. If I hear of conflicts or I hear of struggles yeah. or there's sickness or something, um, I pray this, you know, and often I'll get some of my daughter in laws, they'll ring me and say, Could you pray? And I bring the scripture yeah, up again. Right. God, you said, Yes. You said, yes. Great yes. should be the peace of yes. my children. And in that scripture, it never says that my kids have to be perfect. No. Yeah. And that's what I love. Yes. Mm. And I think there's so much power in praying the word of God. Yes. Not just praying, oh, just whatever thought comes to Mm -hmm. mind, but praying the word of God into that situation. Mm And um, Stormy O. Martin has written a few of um, The Power of a Praying Wife or Power of a Praying Parent um, books. And I've had a few women say to me, how do I pray for my children or how do I pray for my family? And that's my first you know, recommendation is that that book, you don't have to read it from beginning to end. I don't have time for that, to be honest, but I go to, it has a topic. Yes. Each chapter is a topic. So it could be their health, their relationships, their sexuality, their, um, you know, their interests or their gifts and talents. And so whenever my children are struggling in one area in particular, I'll turn to that chapter. I'll go to the back of that chapter. I'll find that, that specific prayer and I'll just pray it out. Um, because it has scriptures attached to it and it's, it's using that sword, isn't it? The sword Mm -hmm. of the spirit and fighting on their behalf, which I think is so important, Mm -hmm. um, as, as Christian, um, mums and in, in, um, raising these children that we do need to fight in the spirit, like you said, on their behalf. Um, Bring heaven into your home. Yeah. And there are resources. You know, I, I used to get a lot of James Dobson. I love James Dobson. He was just so real. James Dobson. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. probably old fashioned. Yeah, it is, <laughs> oh, it's never old fashioned because it's great, uh, straight scripture in that. But he was very good. He yeah. was so yeah. good and yeah. so just so practical. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember him talking about having dates with your kids. Yes. Yeah. And yes. um, that was that's so intentional, people, people, yes, right there, isn't it? And I think that's yes. probably a key: be intentional. Yeah. You don't have to have the full blueprint, no. but you have the Word of God. You have yeah. the family of God. Yeah. You can look around the family and go, "Who looks like they're doing their yeah. family well?" Just get close yes. to them, ask them questions, yes. and and pick their brain. Go to all the old ladies and old men and say, mm-hmm. "Hey, what would you do different?" Mm-hmm. Ask yeah. those questions because they will give you great wisdom out of mm-hmm. their mistakes. Yeah. And I think, you know, I always say there's no, there's no mistake unless you don't learn from it. Absolutely. And if we can pass the wisdom on to the next generation, mm. they get to do it better yeah. and they stand on our shoulders. Mm. I love that. You were talking about intentional before too, um, Kim. One of the things that uh, we did is we opened our house. Mm. So our children's ch- friends came to our house. Mm. So it was, it was um, twofold. It was so I knew what was happening mm. and who they were playing with. Um, I was very protective in that way. Um, so, but also it gave us an opportunity to bring children in um, and influence, or you know, they would see model, how life yeah. was. Model mm. is a better word. Um, the only down come to that is you have to keep a fully stocked fridge. Yes, and I was thinking that you, because I have yes. boys, so they all bought boys yes. and their mates, and and you just cut up, you know, food and more food. Yeah. But again. It was around the table. Mm, yes. We would have afternoon tea and you'd just lay it on and you'd mm, sit, not just yeah. feed them and, and go, but mm. actually sit so that your children saw you interacting with other children yes. mm. and you were the same with them as you were with your children. And so there was like um, uh, um, stability and it doesn't change from one dimension to another. It This is how we do life. Mm. But, yes, our, our home was always full of... Yeah little boys that, yeah. you know, didn't want to go home yeah. sometimes, but but it was. And then I knew what they were talking about and I could monitor this mm. and I'd, you just keep an ear down, don't you, Claire? You 100%. Don't, you can be in the next room and you're just listening the whole time, <laughs> which can bring up conversations. Yeah. It's like, so what did you feel about when Johnny said whatever or shared <laughs> that? Or yeah. So you can you can broach those subjects without mm. them um Yes, going any yeah. further in their yeah. minds. Yeah. I, th- I think God calls us to be watchmen yeah, over absolutely. our family. Mm. Um, and I was very intentional of doing very similar mm. as well. Um, but also, you know, when I used to pick them up from the bus, they went to King's. And um, I purposely picked them up because I wanted to know what their day was like. Yes. Mm. Um, and and you have that sensitivity as a mum that you can pick up emotions with mm. no words spoken. Yes. And so that watchman became, when they have friends, you're watching who they're choosing, yes. um, who they're around, what are their appetites that they're growing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you start to be a watchman on the wall around your family. 
of just being careful about what's coming in yeah. and what's going out. Mm. Um, so we did the same. And even though we lived, you know, a bit of acreage and far out, we still always made it. You're welcome to bring your friends yes. over. Yes. Our house got an open door. And that is a really yeah. safe thing because we often say no to our children because culture is maybe not agreeable with our faith. Mm -hmm. But you can't say no without exchanging it for something else. You Absolutely. can't, you can't yeah. expect your children to be lonely. Mm. Um, they need friends, but they need good friends. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we really do have to open the home and say, well, they, you can't go there, but invite them home yeah. and yeah. they can stay over yeah. and those sort of things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. I just feel like we could just keep on going. There's so many more questions that keep popping into my mind and I actually had a whole list of, of others, but I like that this just organically flowed and... Yeah. One thing I really loved about this conversation is your um, just your vulnerability and admitting, you know, your faults and your flaws, um, because I think that speaks volumes. And uh, like you said earlier, Claire, we are just so hard on ourselves. So a lot of women sometimes struggle to reach out because they look and they think, oh, you've got it all together because of mm -hmm. where you are in life now or what you're doing. But to hear those struggles and to hear how you um, navigated through them um, together with God and um, you know we're all still on that journey um, I just yeah want to thank you so much for coming and sharing today and um, I'm sure this won't be the last time um, but there's also you know a lot more that we will discuss on upcoming podcasts as well um, as far as you know um, single parenting and even um, those with children with disabilities and um, and different types of parenting courses or books and more resources out there. So just keep um, your ears tuned and eyes tuned for those um, podcasts coming up. Um, but that's it for us today. Thank you. Any last you, words or closing uh, statement before we finish up? You know, one of the things I would say is don't rush the season mm. of yes, being a mum. Absolutely. Enjoy mm. every single moment mm. and be really intentional to make mm. memories. Mm. The time goes so fast, doesn't it? Mm. And this is why being a grandmother is so special oh, because absolutely. you're so aware mm -hmm. um, of how special that time was when you are actually your main responsibility yes. is having those little ones in your care. Mm. And I would say just love them well. Love them uniquely and have fun. Mm. Take time. Totally. Just mm. slow life down a little bit yeah. and be intentional about really enjoying your kids. Yeah. Mm. That's brilliant. I totally agree. I... Um, I look back. With, I looked after my grandchildren from the time they were about two months old every Wednesday, and they were big days. And um, I, I, we had a, I built, built a sandpit, and we had all of the things, and there was water. And by the time they left on Wednesday night, my house was just covered in sand and dirt <laughs> and everything else. And I thought, I've often thought, I wish I had allowed this in my own home. We had mess and everything else, but. I didn't worry about it. If mm. my grandchild, my granddaughter was in my high heel shoes in the sandpit, it was mm. like she's having fun and, and um, we had water everywhere and the dogs were in the <laughs> mix of it and everything. But don't be so um, uh, connected with a clean house yes. or having everything perfect. I agree. Yeah. And the other thing I'd, I'd like to say is, um, and I think we've both touched on it in different ways, is you're the benchmark. Mm. So when you... Um, the way you raise your child, the seeds that you plant that you may not see come to fruition in that time, mm. that's where your children start. Yes. And so um, we've, we've both seen like our children go on and, and mm. say, I wish that we had done that or mm. that's mm. such a great idea, they're doing mm. such a job and they're setting another benchmark mm. that their children will go yeah. off from there and that's the wisdom mm. of the generations mm. and the legacy yes. that we see. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And, and just one last thing is don't mm. question whether you're the right mum or you're mm. the best mum because God picked you mm. yes. to be the mother of the yes. children he's given you. Yes. And I think to realise that God chose you. Yes. Like that's incredible. What yes. a value. What mm. an honour he's placed on you and worth he's placed on you. Mm. And you are the best person mm. for but your children. Yes. yes. Yeah, that God knows their future and what they needed, mm. Mm. which is a bit daunting when you think about it. Yeah, that's it. You know, <laughs> yeah. just being able to be um, great privilege and honour, yet re weighty responsibility yes. of being able to raise an eternal being. Mm. Yes. You know? Absolutely. Yes. That's why I say that often, but it's, I'm reminding myself when I say it that you know, I get so bogged down by the day-to-day, -day, what I need to be yes. doing next, that sometimes I'm like, I need to just stop and actually... Yes. 
listen to Jethro's day or, you know, not just be rushing on to the next yes. thing and yes. and feeling guilty sometimes for stopping. So all those things, it's yeah. just, it's so important. We're continually having these discussions as those reminders and, mm. and encouragement. Mm. So, You know, when you yeah. asked me to do this, Kim, um, it was a really lovely moment. I don't know if you had the same thing, Sue, to just stop and reflect mm. and be reminded. And I found myself you know, unusually, getting teary (laughs) about the great privilege that God bestowed on me to have kids. Mm. And I never take that for granted. Mm. And, you know, we haven't done it perfectly, but to continually celebrate who our children are Mm. and be the the, the people in their world that no matter what they do, no matter where they go, Mm. they would always know that they would have a cheerleader in us as their mum. Absolutely. That no matter what, Absolutely. you know, and I remember saying to one, one son and he was, he was actually living not in, on the Gold Coast and I, I rang him one day and I said to him, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, I will always love you mm. and you need to know that. Mm. And if we can just take time to do what you're saying, mm. Kim, it's be super intentional that these moments go so quickly mm, and if we will continually speak life over our children because the world out there is harsh. Mm. It tells them all the time they're not enough, they're not mm. good enough, they don't measure up, school is hard and the comparison is huge, <laughs> peer pressure is loud. But if they would have one voice that would continually mm. reverberate in their ears that says you are enough, you are perfect just mm-hmm. as you are, fearfully and wonderfully made yeah. and I love you and I think you're amazing. Mm. Uh, that is the most powerful thing we can do as mums. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I don't think either of us, any of us have a dry eye right now. We can see the, <laughs> the tears welling up, but that's just beautiful. Thank you so much, ladies. We honour you. And, um, yeah, if you see any of these ladies and want to continue a conversation with them, I'm sure they'd be more than willing to um, catch up and um, <coughs> such a pleasure. if you can even just leave um, a comment um, in the comment section there of maybe something that encouraged you from this podcast today and we'll keep the co- conversation rolling until next time.